I don't mean this to be critical. I really don't. But I've noticed in listening to people around me, not close people, but just through the years I've been a Christian, people will contaminate your faith with their doubts. If God this, if God loves us, then why? If God really has your back, then why did he let you hurt? Like, if, 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 if. And the language of doubt will pollute your faith. So what you need to do is you need to tune out people who speak words of doubt with if. And you need to listen to your own language. Are you one who is conversant in the language of doubt? If so, stop saying if in reference to God. God is who he is. His word will accomplish what he promises. There is no room for if in the life of a child of God. Let me, let me share something else with you. It should never take a sign for us to believe the Word of God. It should never take a sign for us to believe the Word of God. In Gideon's case, he was asking for these signs even though God had made it clear to him what he would do. Now, in Gideon's defense, there are others in this book, many others, who heard God tell them something and they said, Lord, I need a sign. For instance, one with which you'll probably be familiar is God's servant Moses. You remember when God caught the bush on fire that was not consumed and Moses took his sandals off and had a conversation with God and Moses did everything he could do to talk God out of using him, out of calling him, Lord, you've called the wrong person. Lord, you got the wrong guy. Lord, I have a speech impediment. Lord, 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 Lord. <laughs> I mean, he did everything he could. 